story of us about Blake and Hunter. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is while you're in the world. Elton John, lyrics from your song. <laughs> so, you're telling me there's a chance? <laughs> yes, this is written a bit late. I still think it brings the same impact that it should have from the beginning. It will not be written beautifully because I can't let you proofread it. Although it might not be perfect grammar wise, I mean every single word I put in this. I want to continue this story year after year to look back on how our relationship has developed throughout the years. So let's begin. In high school, I was a typical dweeb, oh flirting with girls left and right, thinking I was a real charmer. I wasn't, I'm still not. I went on dates, I texted girls, simply to just have somebody to talk to. You were different. I don't know what it was, but I wanted to be with you. I never had such desire to be with anybody. You were cute, quirky, and smart. I was also so nervous to tell you how I felt because I wanted everything to be perfect. I didn't want to lose the chance of being with you by claiming my like for you too early. I remember sitting on a deck at Oak Island by myself, listening to the waves and watching the sunset, my favorite time and place for deep thought. I was going to tell you, but I didn't know how. A few nights later, I received a text <laughs> from you that simply said, hey, smiley face. I could have cried because I was so excited. The fact that you, the girl I wanted nothing more than to be with, just randomly decided to text me because she was bored and currently on her way to the beach took me to cloud nine. Eventually, this gave me the confidence to tell you, even though you already knew. Once all that stuff got established, I was just happy. I would tell everybody because I was so happy that I was going to potentially date the person I worked so hard to win over. Did I ask you to homecoming? I wasn't quite as nervous to ask you this, but was, you know, still nervous. I remember you were nominated for homecoming. I would tell every single person I talked to in the hallways that I was going to homecoming with the potential homecoming queen. Once you won, I was convinced and knew I was the coolest lad in the halls of Fitton County High School. I was honored to be your date. Yes, we weren't officially together, but I was so happy that I could take such a perfect girl to her final homecoming. I knew at homecoming that it was meant to be. I mean, do you remember our dress tie synchronization? We got pictures, waited in line, and danced the night away. The whole night, I was nervously waiting to ask you to be my girlfriend. I knew what the answer would be, but the fact that it was becoming reality almost put me in denial. It was too good to be true. We went to Jesse's to watch movies. We cuddled on the floor, watching whatever <laughs> movies we chose, and eventually fell asleep. It was early, early morning that you had to leave his place, and I walked you out, hugged you, kissed you, and forgot to do one freaking thing, ask you to be my girlfriend. Instead, being the dweeb I was, still am, I texted you literally right after you left and said, so, you wanna make this thing official? I still regret this every time I think about it. What a sissy thing to do. I'm glad you somehow looked past that and said yes. I mean, what a moron. Little did I know that stupid text has brought us to now. <laughs> you were in your early senior year, me in my junior year. I remember you used to get mad at me because I would fall asleep without saying goodnight. I would try so hard to stay up, but I couldn't. Nothing has changed. I would always try to time when I got to school because I wanted to meet you in the parking lot and walk in together. My favorite part of the day was being able to see you straight through the doorway between Palmer and Weaver's rooms. It was always so heartbreaking when one of them would close the door. I was so happy that I was with this beautiful young lady. I couldn't believe it, still can't. I remember I was embarrassed to do things in front of you. I remember when you came over for the Ohio State-Wisconsin game Apparently we ate a lot and I had to poop. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I was sweating. I went upstairs and ran to Rob and said, Rob, I have to poop so bad. What do I do? <laughs> he said, uh, poop. It's natural. So I did. I never told you until later. Cut. We grew closer very quickly. Still awkward. Again, nothing has changed. 
still lost. But we knew we liked each other. I, again, was such a wuss, and I didn't tell you I loved you in person. I was just too afraid for you to laugh in my face. I knew I meant it. You were special. When I kissed you goodnight right on your front porch, and I said it for the first time in person, I could barely get it out. It was such a relief, though. Our relationship continued to blossom. We dealt with our <laughs> first time of separation. I went to the men's retreat for three days. Oh my goodness. Barely any service. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I couldn't wait until I saw you again. Then, oh boy, the big one, distinguished young woman. <laughs> I remember driving you home to your car in the high school parking lot that night before you left. I said goodbye, and then you drove away. I sat in my car and cried for about 10 minutes. What a freaking loser. That week was torture. I was in deep depression. I just wanted to see you and I couldn't wait until I was able to see you. I rode up with your family, still not totally comfortable about it. I was still awkward and hadn't met your whole family. I remember sitting in the back and your mom handing me your letter from OSU, unopened. My heart sank. The loving side of me wanted you to get in, the selfish side of me didn't want you to get in. I was so scared of what would happen. I was dreading that day from the day we started dating. You got in. I was happy. I was scared and I didn't want you to know. I just wanted to support you. I knew I wanted to be with you throughout. I wanted to make our relationship stronger before you left. I thought about it every day. I was dreading the day in August you had to leave. I was determined to keep us together. The day finally came. You came over, and I was prepared for you to leave. I accepted it, since I was dreading it for months. It was diluted by Joe's random appearance, <laughs> but it still made me sad. I was excited for you, but I couldn't say the same for myself. You said goodbye, and then the challenge became reality. Blake was at the school of her dreams. Woof, woof. I remember how nervous you were the day you left. You were beyond excited, but also full of uncertainty. You definitely weren't as concerned about our relationship as I was, in the sense that you were heading to this completely new environment that is incredibly intimidating. I was still in good old VC, just hoping we would make it. You were making friends, and I hated all of them. <laughs> I didn't trust them. I was like an overprotective parent. But I wanted you to have fun and not feel restricted by me. It was a struggle. <laughs> but hey, we made it. And you were changing for the better and transitioning to the city better than I would have ever thought. I remember my first day of school that year. You texted me, happy last first day of school ever. While you were in this big change, you still thought of me and what I was going through. Not that it was as big as yours. You could have easily kicked me to the curb and started your new chapter, but you didn't. I could not wait for you to come home for Christmas break. The day had finally come. I was so happy. But then came the dreading of you leaving again. That day finally came that you had to go back up. I was much more upset this time around because I was being teased and didn't get to brace myself for months like I did when you left in August. That upcoming month was hard for you. Surprisingly, I wasn't the saddest one. Graduation was on the horizon, so I had something to keep me a little occupied. I was looking on where I was going to school. I wanted to be close to you. I also wanted to be smart about it. I decided to commute and stick with another year of not being close to you. I graduated, all 275 pounds of me. You finished your first year at Ohio State. You were home for the summer. And then the challenge started all over again. Another August rolled around and you left again. I was still going to be at home. I think I was more okay with it this time. There wasn't as much uncertainty, and yes, I hated it, 
but I wasn't scared. If it was going to end, I knew distance wasn't going to be the reason for it. You were more confident in going back up, and I was ready for college life as well. I definitely had more freedom. I was able to see you a lot more. I had just bought the Banshee and had a car that I could consistently drive up there. This made the distance a lot more bearable. I knew I didn't want to stay at OUC for more than two years. I planned on transferring to OU. However, I then realized it wasn't too much of a stretch for me to go to Ohio State. I always wanted to go there. You kept asking me, am I the reason you want to come up here? Of course you were! Why wouldn't I want to be with you? The school of my dreams and the girl of my dreams in one location? I was definitely going to transfer to Ohio State. A few months went by and I finally got my acceptance. I remember calling you at 7 in the morning and forcing you to wake up. You sounded grumpy until I told you I got in and you let out this tired little screech. I will never forget that. I was able to be with you again. It would be a normal thing, not just every other weekend or trying to find the time to drive up. I was one happy camper. We made it. Oh my goodness, we friggin' made it! Now, I was coming to Ohio State. Although I was very much familiar with the campus, it was definitely new to me. You called it home. I did not. I had to catch up. And while I was transitioning, you were already settled. But you helped me with the transition. I would have been lost on my own. I had plans to live right next to you. This wasn't the case. Instead, I was placed on the opposite side of campus. This meant for a long haul to get, your plate, to get to your place when I missed the bus, which was often. I remember walking in dark, windy winter nights just to go to your place. It was horrible, but it was all worth it to see your smile when I walked through the door. A year went by, and then part of another. You had the, one of the most stressful semesters anybody has ever had. You were tired. You were emotional. At times, you wanted to take it out on me. Hee <laughs> hee. I was honored to be the one to take it. You needed to do it to somebody, so why not me? And on a personal note, I feel Hunter deserved a gold medal. <laughs> we both knew the outcome would be, reward, would be rewarding. You are now a graduate of THE Ohio State University, which is <laughs> awesome. Uh, those restless days and all those angry outbursts, the tearful nights, uh, make you feel defeated, brought you to now. A college graduate with a great future. I was still in the sense of denial. I couldn't believe we were in the same frickin' place again. The majority of our relationship was being away from each other and just need to reassure each other that we would make it to something like this eventually. That eventually was now. We've done so much together, been through so much. We've been through happy moments and sad moments. We've been to six musicals, six concerts, four French circus shows, two trips to the beach, and one trip out of state all by ourselves. We've consumed an abundance of Adriatico's breadsticks, Johnny's, sushi, and mashed potatoes. We put thousands of miles on our cars just to go see each other. Through all of this, there has always been uncertainty. That is the beauty of it. Life is full of uncertainty. It can lead to absolutely anything. We need somebody to go through the uncertainty with. I'm glad I've had you to go through it all with me while we try to figure out our all so confusing lives. I don't know if we will ever have it all figured out, but I'd want nothing more than to not have life figured out with you by my side. I want to go through every great moment with you and every horrible moment with you. To wrap this very wordy narration up <laughs> of the story of us, I will leave you with one phrase that says it all. I got you. I got everything.